It's not about luck. So you're saying, I know it takes money to make money, but you also got to have knowledge to make money. Hey guys, when you're coding in MQL, there are times when you want to check how many open positions are there already, either buy or sell. Or in case if you're working with order placement, then you might want to check how many orders are already there, if there is already a buy order or a sell order in place so that you don't make another one. So today we'll look at the course on how to get that. So let's get to Meta Editor and let's create an EA. Let's call it check for positions and I will click next and next. And here we have the opening template. I'll clean it up. So we're left with only the initialization functions. Every code here is going to be done on the start of the year. De initialization. every code here is going to be done on the stopping of the year and on tick where every code here is going to be run on every price change or every tick in MQL. Now, because we will be engaging in trading operations, so we need to make a reference to the trade class and that is found in the file trade.trade.mqh. In this include folder, you can find it here in the trade folder by trade MQH. These are all the codes somebody has written, which are available to us in MQL. So that we can place buy orders, sell orders and different types of trading operations. And also we can get information on the open positions by referencing to this class. Now the classes I'm going to use today is the first one is the C trade class and I'm assigning it to a variable called trade. This will be used to open and close positions if you like. Then you have another class type, which is position info. And I'm creating a variable and assigning it to C position info class. This will help us get the information on all the positions which are currently open. And the third one I'm creating or, or calling is the C order info. And this class I'm assigning to a variable. I'm calling it ord for orders. And this will help us get information on orders. Next thing I need are some variables where I will store the values. So I'm creating four variables, integer variables. So one, two, three, four, five, they can store values, integer values. The first one is open buy, where I will store the number of buy positions, which I currently open. Open sell, where I will store the values of how many sell positions are there. Then open buy order, where I will store the value of how many orders are placed currently for buy and how many sell orders are placed currently. Now, in order to identify the trades that this year or the year that you're writing that has placed versus any other open position by either other EAs or by manually opening it, you need to have a magic number. And a magic number is basically a unique number that we assign to this expert advisor so that every trade this expert advisor places or changes can be uniquely identified from any other trades which this EA has in place. I'm calling it as an input so that user can actually input this which basically means that if I go to my input tab on the MetaTrader, then here it appears and it is available for the user to input whatever number they want. I'm keeping it to the default number. So coming back. Now the first thing we need to do is on the initialization of the EA, we have to set this expert advisor number by saying set expert magic number and passing on the information from our variable to that. From here onwards, Every time this EA is going to do anything, it's going to place the trades or change the trades with the magic number that we assigned to it. The second thing, which is just my preference, is that I don't like to see grid lines on my chart. So I'm using the chart set integer function to set the grid lines to false on the main chart. Zero is the main chart. Now we can create a function here, which we can then call whenever we want to then see how many positions are currently open. So I'm creating a function by the name check open positions and it's a void function. So it does not return any value per se. Then we start by setting our variables that we created here and we set the value to zero so that the, every time the function is called, the initial value of open buy and sell is starts at zero. So then we can start counting. Then I'm using an MQL provided function which is the positions total. So I go for and as a variable integer, I'm creating a variable i 
and I'm saying for i equals the total number of positions minus one because MQL starts the position numbering from zero. So if there are two positions open, the, po the numbering will be zero and one. So I need to go minus one to get it down to the level where I want it to be. So if there are 11 positions, the numbering will go from zero to 10. So I have to start with positions total minus one. So 11 minus one, 10. So I start at the 10th position. And as long as I, the variable we have created here is bigger than or equal to zero, then you run the code below. And every time you run the code below, decrease the number of I by one. And I, I minus minus basically means decrease it by one. So what we're saying here is that if there are 11 positions open, then I equals to positions total minus one. So I is equal to 10. Then I, which is 10, is bigger than zero. So run these codes using the value for I as 10. And then the next time you come here, you reduce it by one. So then it's nine. So then you check the position nine or take the position nine and then run the codes below on position nine, then eight, then seven, then six, until you get to zero. And once you get to zero, and the next time you come here, because it's minus one, so then this function doesn't work. I is smaller than zero then, and then stop running the codes below. So now once that is clear, then the first thing I want to do is I want to select a position. If there are 11 positions in our example, for example. So the first time the system is gonna come here, it has the value of I as 10 because it's i equals positions total minus one. So the value is 10. So then select the position which has the 10th value. And we call it by using the C position info variable that we had created. And by basically saying, and when you will type POS and then you hit dot, it opens up everything which is available to this POS. And here we have the set select by index. And I'm using that. So we select by index so that we select a position. So now that we have selected that position, we can start checking things. So the first thing I check is if the position symbol, so whatever is the selected position, the symbol, and here again, you can select it from a drop down as well. Once you type POS and you hit dot, it will open up this drop down. So if the symbol equals to the current symbol of the chart, so if the, the position symbol is the chart symbol and the position's magic number is equal to our magic number, then we know, for example, if we are on the US dollar JPY chart where we are running this EA, then we know that the, this position has been placed by our EA because it matches the input magic number and the position is US dollar JPY. So it is related to the current chart and it is placed by this EA. So it is our position. So then we can check that if the position, this position that we have selected, if the position type of that position that we have selected is equal to position type by, and this is the equal to sign when you're checking uh, a condition equals equals, that's basically telling MQL that I'm checking a condition that this is equal to this. So if position type is equal to position type by, then we know it's a by position. And in that case, we can go ahead and this open by variable that we had set to zero, we can make it one. Plus plus in MQL means add one more to it. So it was zero, so you can add one more to it. Then if that is not true, if it's the by position, if it's not a by position, then we say, well, if the position type then equals to cell, position type cell, then increase the value of this variable that we have started as zero on cell to one more. And I'll close the brackets here. Now let's go to on tick again. I'm creating two variables. The first variable is a double, which basically means it can have decimals. And I'm calling it close one. And I'm calling the function I close, providing the value of the current symbol, the current time frame, and look back of one bar. It basically gives me the price of the close of the previous bar. Then I use the I open function to get the value of the price, the opening price of the last bar. So then I can go ahead and I can check a very simple um, condition that if close one is bigger than open X one, which basically means that the, the bar is green, it opened less and then closes higher. So if it is green, then I want to place a trade and I can use my variable 
the trade variable here that I created as C trade. I can use that variable to say buy. And once I open it, ask me for lot size. I provide it. What's the symbol? I say it's symbol. Then what's the price I want to buy it? I don't want to specify. Stop loss, I don't want to specify. And TP, I don't want to specify, which basically means zero, zero for stop loss and TP. So no TP, no stop loss, and whatever price is available. And then I don't want to say any comment. And here I close it. So if close is bigger than the open, which means it's a green candle, we want to open a sale. And if the close is less than open, which means that it was a red candle. And if it's a red candle, then I want to sell it on the opening of the new bar. Now I want all of this to happen only on a new bar. So I'm going to use my standard new bar function. And there is a separate video in my MQL how to series, which says how to check for a new bar. I'm calling that here by saying if it is not a new bar, then return which means exit the function do not run the codes below so if it's not a new candle then just don't do anything if it is a new candle then i want to check and now i'm going to call for my function so if it is a new bar then check for the open position so come here and do this and then i'm saying well find the close one of last bar open one of last bar if the close is bigger than x1 then open a trade and then sell the trade let's run it to see so here we have we have a green candle so it there was a buy open we have a red candle so there's a less sell open and this is how we are placing the trades now let's see how we can find how many trades are there so now that we now that the system is working and it's opening up the trades on our provided criteria i just want to check in the comments how many sell how many open buys are there and how many open sells are there so we use a comment code and i'm gonna go ahead and run it again and now here when the buy position was open we have one open buy we have two open sell right now we have three now on the next candle we'll see it we have now four so the, now the system is counting on every new bar how many of positions are open at this point in time currently there are four buy positions open and five sell positions open so now as a quick example of what you can use it this piece of information is, for example, if we come here and we only want to, to open the buy trade if the open buy is less than one, which basically means that is zero open buy currently. And we only want to open one position once that happens. So now if we run it again, then we will see that it is only going to open one buy and then it will never open another buy until the time that this position is closed. And this position is never going to be closed because there is no TP or stop loss. But you understand the idea we still have a lot of sell positions open because here we haven't provided that criteria but now even despite that we are getting these buy bars we're not getting the buy signal because there's already an open buy position let's do it to sell as well so here we go we say only open the position if the open sell is less than one and now if i run it we got the buy open and we got the sell open and now the system is not going to do anything at all. So this is one way to use this information that you can get. I'll come back with more videos on what else can you do with this position information because you can change the stop loss, take profit, you can partially close the positions and those kind of things will catch up in, in, in the next video. So until then guys, cheers, stay safe, trade safe.